Welcome to my review of the long forgotten adventures of Tom Sawyer on the NES. The story in the game is that Tom Sawyer falls asleep in the middle of class and has a dream of going on an adventure to save his crush Becky Thatcher, who is kidnapped by the evil Injun Joe. So you play as Tom and you go around being the little asshole that he is, throwing rocks at people and animals and collecting power-ups. There are four different kinds of power-ups, most of them are marked with the letter T. T's are pretty much equivalent to gathering coins in Super Mario Bros. There's a counter in the upper left hand corner of the screen that keeps track of how many T's you have. Once you get 20, you earn an extra life. Sometimes you'll find skulls which will wipe out 10 of your T's. The heart power-up gives you invisibility for a short period of time. And finally, the slingshot power-up provides you with the temporary ability to fire your rock straight ahead, which gives you more range, but isn't always a good thing, because sometimes you're better off with just your regular arc pattern so you can hit overhead enemies. The controls are real simple and fluid for the most part. A jumps, B fires the rocks, and you can throw a good amount of rocks at one time. The D-pad of course controls your direction from left to right, and down does. The only gripe I have with the controls is the jumping. You don't have too much hang time, and if you decide to change direction once you jump straight up, you don't move very far. You die if you get hit by an enemy just once, which a lot of people seem to find as a flaw in this game, but the enemies aren't overly challenging, so you pretty much just have to be careful. The game would be way too easy if you were given a life bar and you could take a few hits. So when you do die, you turn into a puff of smoke, which is a pretty unusual death sequence in a video game, even for Nintendo. Not only do you turn into a cloud of smoke, but your enemies do too. And once you lose all your lives, Tom wakes up from his dream and the game is over. And check it out, the game over screen has the game over text on a cloud. I don't know why the hell clouds are such a big theme in this game. I guess because cloud bubbles resemble dreams in comics. That would be incredibly cheesy if that were the case, but I wouldn't put it past him. There are six levels all together, all of them pretty distinct from each other, and the challenge is pretty balanced for the most part. There's a decent variety of enemies in each level, and you hardly ever see an enemy appear two different levels, so you never really get bored with repetition, except for the music. The graphics, on the other hand, are kind of bland and dull. The backgrounds are really plain and lack detail, and the characters and animation look like they were just thrown together in a half-assed effort. The gameplay itself is alright. On the surface, there's really not much to do besides run and fire constantly, but regardless of the simplicity, it's challenging and entertaining enough to keep you occupied if you're bored. Oh yeah, there's also a two-player mode. Player 2 is Tuck Finn, and you alternate between deaths much like in Mario. There's no point system, but the game keeps track of how quickly you finish each stage, so if you're competing, it's a time attack game. Whoever gets through the game fastest wins. Well, that's pretty much covers the basics, so let's start the game up. Okay, the first level is the pirate ship, and it's a perfect example of the game's plain, boring-ass graphics. The colors are so mono, and like I said before, there's not much detail. Pirates are easy, they just walk slowly and jump into the air. They have weapons too, both knives and guns, but they never use either of them. They just lumber towards you and hope to walk right into you. Kinda pisses me off too, cause pirates are supposed to be badass, but in this game they're just a bunch of stumbling drunks. There's a fat rat mini boss that fires what looks like sound waves at you. I guess his squeaks are so loud that they kill you. This rat also has the amazing ability to float and turn invisible. Just hit him twice and duck underneath his shrieks of death. Right after you fight him, you climb down to the bottom level of the ship below sea level. Now I think this floor of the ship is flooded with water because the baby octopus appears to be swimming. But you run and jump at the same speed as on land, so being underwater doesn't slow Tom down at all. Anyway, the octopus's attack involves shooting ink and slowly swimming towards you. They shoot two different color variations of ink at you. The dark ink covers you, turning you navy blue. And if you get hit with the dark ink while covered, you die. Now if you get hit with the light ink while covered, it cleans the ink off of you, but the light ink kills you if you're not covered. Whatever, just duck underneath the ink and attack him from behind. The main boss is probably the most pathetic boss in the history of video games. It's a giant octopus and it looks impressive enough, but it doesn't do anything. It just stands there and sends his children after you. Not only is this octopus a lazy bastard for not attacking, or even moving, he forces his offspring into battle. So much for that father of the year award he was up for. All you have to do is repeatedly hit him in the eyes, and since he doesn't move, you don't have to move either. To make it even more easy, the kids don't even attack until you get your first hit in. They just swim around his head in synchronized fashion. Look, I'm not even doing anything, and they're just swimming around his head. And their attack is lame anyway, they just slow down and glide over towards you ever so gently. Easy targets for your rocks. If somehow you're fighting long enough, 
or just stand there and wait. Eventually, the daddy octopus pulls his head out of his ass and actually does attack by firing a huge wad of ink at you that you can't avoid. I know that this is the boss of the first level and everything, so it's supposed to be easy, but goddamn, they could have made it a little more challenging. Well, if you want a challenge, the river stage is what you're looking for. In this stage, you row a raft of river in an overhead view, so you've got to get used to a whole different layout. The controls aren't quite as fluid as the side-scrolling levels. Moving left and right isn't so bad, but moving up and down is considerably slower. On top of that, the screen automatically scrolls up, and you have to keep up with it at all times. If you get caught in front of a piece of land and the screen catches up to you, you're dead. Now, the music in this game is repetitive, but the song in the river stage is about as monotonous as it gets. Listen to it. That's it, over and over again. You gotta contend with some weird shit in this level, like logs, slow weaving chunks of land, giant frogs, whirlpools, and a string of black balls. These flying blue birds fly around in circles because they're on PCP. Now the funny thing is, in the manual, these birds are referred to as black penguins. Black penguins? For one thing, they're blue, and secondly, they fly, which isn't a technique penguins are famous for. The manual also says that this little prick that throws rocks at you is a boy named Ricky, has the same, has some kind of grudge against Tom. Look at this kid, he's like half my size. Why can't I just park my raft on the shore and kick his ass? He's annoying as hell too, so you really want to pelt him with your rocks, but you can never get a shot at him because he's way off to the side. Fortunately, you can't reach him when he appears the first time. The boss of this river is a giant crocodile, and you'll never be able to guess his attack. Whirlpool. He sends whirlpools at you. The croc weaves back and forth and opens his mouth while the mini whirlpools come. You swerve back and forth and throw the rocks at him when his mouth is open. He only seem to get hits after you hit him with a few rocks consecutively and have them hit the center of his mouth. So it can get pretty frustrating, but as long as you fire repeatedly, you should be able to connect. After several hits, he's all done. The third level is the forest stage, which thankfully brings us back to side scroll. Another good thing about this level is you get a lot of T's, especially from these slug things. Cause they always travel in pairs and there's quite a few of them. They try it a little bit harder with the graphics in this level, adding some mountains and trees and whatnot. But the sky is still blank and overall it's nothing amazing. When you get to the first body of water, jump up and grab onto this pelican. It'll take you a little bit down the level, which is a pretty big help in avoiding all that shit down there. Here's a little easter egg. Stand here and fire at this mushroom. When you hit the center, a leprechaun will appear and give you an extra life. It's pretty random and not much to do with the Tom Sawyer story, but the game designers can always fall back on the fact that this is a dream. One cool thing about that extra life is that the checkpoint is right around where the pelican drops you off, so if you die right around here, you can come back and get the extra life again. In fact, you can commit suicide at about this spot, come back, grab a bunch of teas and the extra life, and eventually get as many lives as you want, but it is time consuming. Down the road, you end up jumping from branch to branch on these trees with all these little monkeys wearing sunglasses that kind of resemble Ozzy Osbourne's annoying son, Jack. And that makes you want to kill them even more because that kid is the biggest tool on the planet. But it's easier not to engage in combat with them. Stay at the top branch on the right side of each tree and wait for them to head for lower ground before you advance. The end boss is pretty weird. A bunch of these Jack Osbourne monkeys form a pyramid and take form of a giant gorilla. Why couldn't it just be a gorilla without the little monkey? Oh well. Stand back and shoot at his face. He spits out several balls of fused together piles of shit overhead that come down towards you in several different patterns, most of which are easily avoided by heading over to the left side of the screen. This gorilla is also a lot like the horse in The Wizard of Oz, as it changes from purple to green to orange after a couple hits each. After you take him out, the Jack Osborne monkeys run away and you're now halfway through the game.